Hello everyone, I'm Alex Kay and welcome to my channel. When your housemate can hear you making your intro from downstairs. This week I thought, seeing as I'm a film student, if you didn't already know, I would recommend some films to watch. Now they're neither good nor bad, they're obscure choices, to say the least, and they're quite dark films. So if you're not into the thriller horror kind of thing, it's probably best you don't listen to this. Number one. This film came out last year, however it is in the style of kind of 60s, 70s kind of um, describe it. Um, You know, the kind of uh, old, like, literally film film style with all the bright colours as well of, like, when Hollywood first came into colour, you had all the vibrant colours. And the film's called The Love Witch, and it's about a woman who moves into a new town and to escape, was it her, like, past life? And it turns out she is a witch who is capable of seducing men with her powers. And throughout the film, she does this, but not everything goes to plan. As magic usually doesn't. Number two is Lords of Salem. Now, if anyone is a fan of the singer Rob Zombie, you would probably know that he has directed a couple of films. And Lords of Salem was his Se Okay, he did a film this year, last year called 31, and then the film before that was Lords of Salem. And it's about a woman who lives in an apartment block, and she receives this stone record with some weird music on, and what it kind of goes downhill from there, and it turns out that the witches from Salem have put a spell on her, or a curse. So that's a really good film. Number three is Stage Fright. Now Stage Fright is a kind of mixed bag of um, musical styles, like the different types of music, like rock, pop, kind of like, you can see elements from like Jesus Christ Superstar, Fan to the Opera, um, stuff like that. It's one of its uh, actors is Meatloaf. If you don't know who Meatloaf is, he's a singer. Stage Fright takes place in a musical camp where the return of this um, kind of musical killer comes about after. 15 years or whatever, or 10 years, something like that. And, like, Meatloaf's character keeps pushing that the show must go on, despite this these murders going on, and it's like, you got to guess who the killer is, and to be fair, it's quite obvious, but it's definitely a good watch with some pretty awful music that you just have to love. Number four. Now this was my favourite horror film of last year, and that is Lights Out. And the reason I liked it was it didn't give everything away at once. Like the problem with horror films these days is that they completely show the monster instantly. Whereas this film, you only see the silhouette of the monster. You never actually see the monster's face until right at the very end and that's only for a split second and that kind of suspense of the silhouette and you don't know what it's gonna do because obviously it only moves in the dark and I think the narrative could have been improved a bit it seemed a bit obvious but the skills put together to hold the suspense of the villain with very well done. 
and that's why I would recommend Lights Out. Number five, and my final film, is called Only Love Left Alive. Now this is a vampire film, and it came out possibly two years ago, I believe. And it has Tom Hiddleston, Tilda Swinton, and John Hurt as its main cast. And they're all vampires trying to survive in the modern world. And obviously it's a difficult thing, and it's kind of this love story, a better love story than Twilight. I'm sorry if there's any Twilight fans watching, but it is a very strong narrative for, like, how love can prevail through such a situation as being a vampire. So I would definitely recommend watching that. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. I hope you enjoy watching those five films, if you watch them. And I will see you next week. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a little comment. And if you haven't already, I would recommend subscribing. See you next week. See you later. Shout out of the week goes to that's so Jack, an American YouTuber who used to be part of a bigger YouTube channel called O12, and they've since been disbanded. So they're all doing their individual channels now, and That's So Jack was one of the first to start his individual channel, I believe, along with Connor Franta. So yeah, go give him a watch. I'll leave the link to his channel in the description. And that's pretty much it. Oh, bye bye